Where this may become a problem is when the role play becomes romantic, violent, or sexual. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about age and role play. Role play is a hobby that only requires an internet connection. You don't have to spend additional money on the hobby, and you don't even really need to be particularly good at any one thing to begin engaging. And that means role play attracts a wide variety of demographics. And what I want to talk about today is the demographic of age in role play. Let's first define that special age where society has determined that you're no longer a minor and instead you're fully an adult, responsible for all of your decisions and your actions. In legal terms, this is called the age of majority, and in most of the world today, 18 is recognized as the legal age of majority. Now, first let's be clear, nothing magical happens when you go to sleep on your birthday eve and then you wake up the next morning on your 18th birthday. Anybody that is over the age of 18 can tell you this. But we must choose a threshold somewhere, and 18 is the threshold that we as a society have decided is that we're going to use. So for better or for worse, even though all of those emotional changes that you're going through when you're entering adulthood don't sort of flip a switch on the night before your 18th birthday, when you turn 18, you are legally responsible for yourself. And this means that you're an adult in most senses of the word. Biologically, the switch into adulthood happens over the course of several years during the time which someone is a teenager and in their 20s. So how does this apply to roleplay? Roleplay largely takes place between two individuals playing pretend together online. This means when two people are roleplaying, they are consenting to various degrees to write together online. This is all fine and good for casual roleplays, just like it's all fine and good to engage in casual conversation with strangers. Where this may become a problem is when the roleplay becomes romantic, violent, or sexual. During your teenage years, because of all of the brain changes and hormonal changes going on, you likely think that you're more mature than you actually are. And this is something that I don't think can be fully understood until you've left puberty behind. At least that's how it is for me and how it is for pretty much everybody that I know. When puberty hits, your brain starts going through literal physical changes, and all of a sudden, everything feels so much more than it did before. Because of these changes, sad things are legitimately sadder. Frustrating things make you legitimately angrier, and also exciting things legitimately feel more exciting. And while you're having all of these emotions, it literally physically takes the brain longer to process problems and come to conclusions. The good news is, though, that everyone goes through this and it's nothing to worry about. I'm going to link a SciShow video in the description that I want you guys to check out that has a lot more detailed information on the concepts that I'm talking about, and they've also got a lot of really good resources in their description that explain this further. The worry does come in, however, when somebody older decides to use this reality of the teenage brain to take advantage of people or harass them or other predatory behaviors. Because as a teenager, everything feels so much more, a teenager is in a unique position to be exploited in very specific ways. This is why often older role players won't role play certain things with younger role players, or indeed even role play with them at all in some cases. This isn't because teenagers are bad writers or bad people. This is because the power difference between someone going through puberty and someone who has exited puberty is vast and it's a huge weight to take on. And because 18 is considered the age of majority, 18 is typically the cutoff age we use in roleplay for this. So if you're a teenage roleplayer, no doubt it has occurred to you that you could just lie about your age. This is all anonymous online, and that way you'll be able to write with better writers and get the type of roleplay that you're looking for. And since it's anonymous, you're probably thinking, what's the big deal? Let's say you're a 16-year-old role player and you really want to be able to role play more mature things with better writers, you want to widen your pool, so you think to yourself, well, I'll just go around and say that I'm 18. Makes sense, right? 
You're never planning on sharing your location or selfies with role play partners, so no one's ever going to find out. And when you widen your potential pool of role play partners, you're going to get that better role play that you're craving. So this is the thought process, right? Well, it's not exactly true. While I might not have proof, I can generally tell when someone is lying about their age, and I think most other people can too, and it's because you can feel that power differential. And what that means is it's only a matter of time before you attract someone who's not interested in the 18-year-old pretend version of you that you're portraying, but someone who's actually interested in the real 16-year-old version of you. And now you've got yourself a predator to fend off. And that predator has plausible deniability on top of everything else. And with social media being what it is now, it's easier than ever for anyone to find out where and who you are. So it's best to just not attract these people in the first place by not going into adult spaces and not lying about your age. Now, let's say you don't attract any predators. That's certainly possible to happen. So you're role-playing with your over 18-year-old friends and everything's going fine, and they just think you're a particularly immature 18-year-old. So that might be fine for you, but you've put your friends at risk. If your friends are caught role-playing explicit subjects with you, they are now in a lot of legal trouble. This can mean anything from fines to jail time to being registered as a sex offender. And these sorts of things follow you for life. So if you care about these people, don't lie about your age. If you are under 18 and you're thinking about lying about your age, instead, just wait. I know 18 feels like an eternity away. It did when I was a teenager, for sure, because again, remember, for a teenage brain, everything feels more. So I absolutely sympathize with where you are if you feel that way. But I promise, roleplay will still be here when you turn 18. So that's my advice when it comes to the subject of age and roleplay. What do you guys think? What are your experiences with age and roleplay? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, whatever engagement features YouTube adds in the future, do it all. And an extra special thank you to my patrons, which you're seeing on the screen right now. If you would like to be included or get other fun perks, link to my Patreon in the description down below. And as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And happy holidays.